Today I'm going to be updating our guest bathroom with new flooring, vanity, paint, and lighting. This will end up being a two-part series, so stick around. Let's go! So I've got a decision to make here. I really want to get started on this bathroom demo, but if you look upstairs, this door right here is the bathroom that I want to update. And this door is where my eight month old is currently napping. And you might be able to hear a sound machine going and she is a pretty sound sleeper. I don't know, do I risk it? That's definitely adding a new dynamic to getting projects done around the house. You guys tell me in the comments, are you able to do projects around your house with sleeping kids around? I start by scoring all of the trim with a utility knife. Lo and behold, on the first piece of trim, I found a bunch of water damage and mold. I continue to score around the vanity so that I don't damage the paint when I peel it away. I shut off the water supply to the toilet and flush it to empty out the water from the tank. To stop any vapors from coming up from the sewer lines, I stuff in some paper towels. Under the vanity, I disconnect the water supply lines. To get the vanity separated from the wall, I used my multi-tool to cut around the plumbing. I scrape away any remaining caulk. And I'll tell you what, this is therapeutic. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. I pull up the carpet so I can remove the old flooring and have a nice transition with the new tile. Oh hey, more water damage. Sweet. I used a mold and mildew killer and sprayed it over any of the areas that had water damage. Although it doesn't look great, luckily the subfloor was still in really good shape, so I didn't worry about cutting out and replacing the wood itself. I used Ditra XL. This is a thicker version of the regular Ditra, and it'll get the tile to the finished height closer to where the carpet is, so there's not an awkward step down. Before I mix any mud, I do a dry fit to make sure I can make everything fit properly. I wipe the subfloor with a wet sponge. This knocks away any debris and dirt, and it also slightly moistens the subfloor. This is important so that you don't draw all the water out of your mud right into the wood as soon as you put it on. I use a V-notch trowel to spread a thin layer of thin set around the floor, and then use a rubber float to get an even bond across the subfloor. I feel a lot of pressure when I have mud mix, so I like to do a dry fit of the tile and make sure everything is cut and laid out pretty well. I use a laser guide here to get the line straight and get all of my cuts the way I'd like. There's a reason that I started with the long wall by the door and the tub. I wanted those to look really good and have those lined up square to the wall and the tub itself because these will be the most visible. If I need to make any adjustments because the wall is not square, I'm going to hide that under the vanity and behind the toilet where you're not really going to see it. Once I had my first couple rows laid out, I mixed up some mud and spread it out evenly. You work the mud in all different directions into the honeycomb of the Ditra, but in your final pass you want all of your rows to be going in the same direction. This allows you to do a side-to-side -side motion with the tile and collapse all of the air pockets. I always check after my first couple tile to see the coverage that I'm getting. You can see here that I don't have really great coverage, so I start back buttering. 
back buttering is just putting a small amount of thin set on the back of the tile in addition to the thin set that you already have on the floor. I like to use these leveling spacers. They look like door wedges and there's a plastic piece that sits under each tile and by pushing in those wedges it pulls the two tiles next to each other level. You'll really appreciate level tiles when you go to grout. I don't worry too much about the aesthetics underneath the toilet so I just do a rough outline of the toilet flange. I have to cut out around this air register so I dry fit some more tile and keep making my way out of the bathroom. I use my handy multi-tool to notch out under the door trim. And when I cut my tile, I make sure that there's enough material left to hide underneath of the wood itself so you don't see a weird gap. I always notice when someone takes a shortcut and just cuts the tile out without cutting out the trim. My favorite part of any tile project is to use this rubber mallet and break away all the plastic tabs. There will be a piece of plastic left under the tile itself, but you won't see it. This method seems to do a good job of breaking off the plastic in the grout line. There will be a couple left over and I use a multi-tool again to trim that out. I clean up my grout lines using two tools, the multi-tool with this carbide tip as well as this hand tool. The multi-tool is really handy for clearing out open space where it's not too tight. And the hand tool is really necessary when you're going up in the corners or up against the tub here where you just can't get the right angle or you don't want to damage anything. I use a damp sponge to wipe away any thin set that got on top of the tiles. This isn't too bad after about 24 hours, but the longer it sits, the harder it is to get off of the tile. I mix up some sanded grout. I use sanded because the width of the grout line. Unsanded grout is for thinner grout lines. Check the bag and it'll tell you the dimensions that you can use. With my rubber float, I work the grout into all different directions in between the tile. And after a couple minutes, the grout hazes over the tile and you can wipe it away with a sponge. Rinse out the sponge often and change the water so that you're removing enough material. And like the genius I am, I decided to leave everything in the medicine cabinet, which made the cabinet super light and really easy to get off the wall all by myself. There was a low area where the vanity was and holes where the medicine cabinet was screwed in. Even though I have textured walls, I make this as smooth as possible and use a light at an angle to see if there are any high or low spots. I then use this orange peel in a can to finish up and blend in the texture.
my patented dumb face that I make when I paint. This little piece of wood actually interferes with the pipes that come up the wall. So I just remove this and it allows the vanity to slide all the way back in close to the wall. I use a stud finder to find the studs in the wall. And using some cabinet screws, I whoop. There we go. I anchor those into the studs. I set my combination square to a quarter inch and this will give me a quarter inch reveal all the way around the door. And these are the marks that I make my measurements off of. Knowing that the baseboards are likely to get more wet and be exposed to water, instead of using MDF like I did around the door, I used a solid wood trim. It wasn't the right dimension, so I had to run it through the thickness planer and trim it down a bit to get it to match the rest of the house. I hook up a new water supply line and a new wax seal. I used a caulking that matches the same color as the grout and used it in the transition between the tub and the floor. I lightly spray it with water and use my finger to round it over. This gives a nice even round over. So that's a wrap on part one of this two-part video series on this bathroom remodel. The floor is a little fancier design than what I would normally pick, but I'm pretty happy with my wife's decision on this one. So keep an eye out for part two of this video series where I update the shower, plumbing, and just the finishing touches on this bathroom. If you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button, get those notifications when videos come out. See you next time.